made it to a Friday, a Frisco Friday here on the road. Shout out to Duke. Shout out to everybody. You know what? Shout out to my man right here from the 415. Hunter. We're going to shout out Hunter, who played and won his first Galileo doubles varsity nice. tennis match over two seniors from Washington High School. Nice. Hunter. He's been listening to the program on his way to school for years now. What does he need to get a simple 10-second shout-out? All you have to do is text the Comcast Business text line, and we got your back, Hunter. We got your back, baby. That's from James. Devin Brown, Piedmont High School class of 09. Led California his, in uh, interceptions this senior year. That's who's going to the Hall of Fame nice. tomorrow. Devin Brown. Shout-out to Devin Brown. Shout-out to everybody. Good morning to all the graveyard shift workers, Long Sherman. Teamsters, union workers, small business owners. Uh, we got Metro Cafe. You talk about small business. Metro Cafe is coming through the building. I'm Omar. so ready. I'm so ready for these cheesesteaks. I'm so pumped. I haven't had Metro's in so long. That's from my home you right know, there. You know what I'm also ready to have? What? Caramel popcorn. Oh, I, you like caramel popcorn? I do. Just give me some regular butter popcorn. You know, oh, I'll, I'll have chocolate I'll have buttered. I'll have whatever. I have kettle, cheese, well, butter. I mean more like Cracker Jacks. Like that's I really oh, do love Cracker, cracker Jacks. Jacks. You don't like the box? I, older I get, I like the box. And I just don't like the Cracker the Jacks. The peanuts that have all the, the peanut, oh yeah, the bottom. It's a mm. lot. It's a lot going on. Okay, well maybe I'll go malt on. for you in the in the second half of the game. All right, Warrior fans, you want to get fired up? I am fired up. You want to get fired up? I'll get you fired up right now. We play this every single day, and we're going to play it every single day when these teams match up. Because Kitty Caraway, he wasn't on our show. He went on with Willard to do because he knew he could get away with this. <laughs> and this is what he said. The matchups are, are a good look for the Kings. They're a good look. And if we play the Warriors as a 60, I'll tell you right now, we'll backhand the Warriors. I don't want to I don't want to play the Warriors just because I, I, I have a, a, a healthy respect and fear for, for Steph Curry. I don't want to deal with him in the playoffs. I really don't. But if it comes to that, we backhand the Warriors. Because the Warriors don't do nothing on the road. They definitely don't play defense on the road. The Warriors too small. Sabonis would eat all, all, all series long. All series long. Let's bring in our main man. We may not be friends after the series, but we are right now. And Drake Bars will be lit up there at ESPN 13 20 when they win a game. But she asked, he's got some first house. we got Duke in the city. He's got some, some heat ready. ESPN 1320s. It's the one and only Kitty Caraway. What half of D-Lo and KC? We love D-Lo and KC. But you know what? This has been, hey, it's been intensifying here, KC. You know it. You know it. And it started with some tweets. It started with Draper. And, and now here you go, Katie, talking about you go back, Candace. What's up, Katie? You laughing, but we ain't laughing. It ain't really funny right now. What's going on, fellas? Look, look, man, I'm going to tell y'all. I'm going to tell y'all like, uh, like, like Bernie Mac told Def Comedy Jam. I'm out here right now, baby. Well, well, and I said what I said. Well, Kenny. Okay? Well, Kenny. What the hell I said? Well, Kenny, like the great Bernie Mac said at Players Club, when you take on the Golden State Warriors, it's going to be trouble, trouble, <laughs> trouble. So what's happening tonight? Not seriously. No seriousness, man. We, You know we love you. Uh who is Sacramento playing tonight? Are they waiting for the Memphis Grizzlies score? Are, is that what they're waiting for to see what Memphis is doing in Milwaukee? I'm, I'm, to be honest with you, I'm really surprised that that's going down that way or potentially going down that way. Um, I, I thought Mike Brown was going to play these guys tonight, no doubt about it. I, I mean, he still might, but I thought that was going to be the case. Um, they haven't let off the pedal all year long, ever rest the guys, nothing like that. Uh, so I thought they were going to play tonight. So when I saw the injury report, I was a little surprised by it. They still might play, might be a little gamesmanship or whatever the case may be. But, um, I, you know, the two teams, to be honest with you, with their loss to San Antonio, the Kings lost to San Antonio on Sunday, and uh, their loss to uh, Mavericks the other day, it kind of it kind of took the two seed out, if you ask me, man. I, I, don't, I don't see that happening. The Kings are kind of locked into this three seed. And even though they are going to have a week off before the playoffs start, you you know, you probably want to make sure if anybody has any little nicks or anything, it's all taken care of before the playoffs start because it's about to be a whole other season. Mike Brown knows that, and he's got to get all those guys ready. So I'm not sure. To answer your question to come around to it, I'm not sure what's going to go on tonight. Um, they might. They might just get you know, some of those guys and, and get ready uh, for the playoffs. You know, KC, uh, Sacramento's only professional team at the major sports is 
the Sacramento Kings. So I want you to kind of describe what this year's team means to the 916 because you're a native. Like I was thinking about like the 2011 49ers. They didn't win a Super Bowl, but what they meant to a region was bigger than that. The 2007 We Believe Warriors, they didn't win a title, but what they meant to the region was so much bigger than that. What does this year's Kings team mean to that region? Well, look, it's a great question, and we talked about it, and we really brought this up on the show maybe about a month ago, right? They hadn't clinched anything or anything, but it looked like it was going to happen. And we don't have any championship teams to go off of, but there's, there's, about, there's about six to seven teams that we absolutely love, absolutely love. You talk about 0203. You talk about the 98-99 team when Jason Williams and Chris Webber jumped on the scene. Uh, you talk about the 95-96 when Mitch Richmond took us to the playoffs for the first time uh, in like 10 years or something like that. This team, already, they haven't played one game in the playoffs. They're already, we got them ranked as the number two team, most beloved team in the history of Sacramento. Wow. They love this team out here. They absolutely love this team. They broke the drought. They brought success to this, to this city for the first time in almost two decades. And they have the whole... They, they, they got a whole little aura to him. There's a thing with De'Aaron Fox where he has something that not Mitch Richmond had, the Marcus Cousins didn't really have. Is is De'Aaron came in as a 19-year-old kid, looked at as a savior. They looked at De'Aaron, you're going to save this franchise. You're going to bring us here. You're going to bring us to a point where we're contenders and take us out of the dark the dark days that we've been in. And God damn it, he's done it. I know they're not, you know, maybe championship continues to some or anything like that. But the bar was low. We asked him, get us back to relevancy, get us to the playoffs, and the kid has done it. We love the Aaron Fox. We love the Monster Sabonis. And then you throw this whole, you know, genius thing that has taken off and is one of the great, uh, I don't want to say actor gimmicks in, in sport, but I will call it what it is, gimmick or whatever. The Beam has taken this whole thing to a whole other level. They love the Beam. They go crazy over the Beam. Like, people... After a road win, you saw me, Dante. After a road win, I had to go downtown. I had yeah. to go to Doko. I saw take you. a video in front of the beam. <laughs> like we love the beam, we love the beam team. This is already. It, it's not O2 because O2 got us to the conference finals. We had that epic series with the, with the Lakers. It's not that, but right now, before a game has even been played in the playoffs, they're slightly behind the O2 team as the most beloved team of all time here. Well, so like, I'll admit it, and I, even though a lot of Bay Area people won't. And I've always felt like the Bay Area has felt like the inferiority. Com- we have an inferior complex to the L.A. market. Like, we just do. Now, mm-hmm. Sacramento and the Bay Area are, are, are aligned on a lot of sports, but basketball is not one of them. Break down the dynamic between Sacramento, the residents, the fans, and the Bay Area. Is there an inferiority complex or maybe envy or something? Because I know that as a Warrior fan, I envied the Lakers forever, and there was an inferiority complex. Oh, uh, yeah, man. It's like, the, it's like the Macho Man told Hulk Hogan when he thought he was looking at Miss Elizabeth. You got, some, you got lust in your eyes, brother. You got lust. That's what we have when we talk about the Golden State Warriors. It was never really like that before, but obviously, when you guys became one of the great dynasties of all time, and we got into the, to the situation where, you know, we're, we're talking about relocation, and we got uh, no playoffs for almost two decades, and we see all the success and the happiness is going on down the road. Yeah, there's a lot of envy going on. Yeah, there's an inferiority complex. You combine that with the fact that, and, and now I don't want to go too deep into this whole thing, but you combine that with the fact that Bay Area people are now coming into our city and taking our homes. No, I <laughs> yeah. think that's real. My there. sister yeah. moved up there. That's no, real. Yeah, no doubt. yeah, you know, and it's not it's not like a bad thing. Like we don't have a problem with it, but you bring Warriors fans here, and we go into the airport, Sacramento International Airport, before this year. Warrior stuff all through the gift shop and all that, uh, and we we didn't like none of that, right? So you talk about all of that, and 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 you put that into what's going on this year, you know, where we're finally good, and you know, and we got you know, well, ninety five seven hoes talking about we want to line up to play the Kings, <laughs> and and, uh, and Brian Windhorst talking about the Kings on the mark, and everybody, oh, we turned up off all of that. Oh, I'm just turned up. <laughs> Off of all of that, man, and <laughs> and, and it's, it, it it is like you said, uh, but it is an inferiority complex. I mean, that's the it's almost to a, to a smaller degree. It's almost San Francisco and Oakland, the city mm. and the town, right? Mm. Like we'll look at it as the little town, you know, not just the town, the little town. 
and, and we always fighting for that respect out here, man. But you know, like you said, across, and, the, and the others, we're, we're we're living proof of it. We got love when it comes yeah. to baseball and basketball. Right. When it comes, or excuse me, baseball and football. When it comes to basketball, we go our separate ways for a couple months. That's all it is. No doubt, Kenny Caraway, ESPN 1320 here on the Morning Roast. We love Kenny. So if you had to stack it up for Kings opponents in that first round, who would you rank one, two, three, four? Would it be Warriors, Clippers, Lakers, Pels? Would it be Lakers, Clippers, Warriors, Pels? How would you? Who do you guys want to see the most in that first round? You know, you know what? Here's the crazy thing about it. I'll, I'll answer your question. But I will say, and people take it as, like, cockiness or whatever. It's like, man, we don't really care Yeah, we play. Number one. Should be like that. So, yeah, well, number one, Bonte, we are, it sounds crazy. It sounds corny. I know. We're so happy to be here. We're so happy to be in this position. You could give us the, the Kevin Durant Warriors and be like, bring them on. Let's go. Let's see what happens. Like, right. we're not, we, we, we just want to see that game one, that game two, mm-hmm. and get in there. And, and we're not, and we're confident in the Kings. Like, the Kings have shown us all year. It, it, it doesn't get uh, reported enough, maybe because it is the Sacramento Kings. This is, I think, offensive rating wise or whatever, the most prolific offensive team in the history of the NBA. In the history of the NBA, there has been no more prolific team in the history of the NBA. They're scoring 121 points a game. Nobody, not the Warriors, not the Suns, not Dallas, not Miami, not Cats, nobody has scored that many points a game in the last 40 plus years in the NBA. Like they're doing things that we haven't seen in our lifetime in the NBA. So we just feel, we feel good about that. We feel good about what we have. We know it's the playoffs, but I still think they're going to score pretty good in, in the playoffs. Um, but to answer your question, it would probably be now with this Paul George stuff. And I, I, I don't, I got some people that know some people. <laughs> I don't know if Paul George is coming back at all. So mm-hmm. I would say the Clippers, number one, um, probably the Pelicans, number two. Uh, and it's really, I'll get off the fence. I'll, I'll, I'll say it once again. I ain't afraid of y'all. <laughs> I'll say the Warriors three and I'll say the Lakers four, but it's really Warriors and Lakers are the same for me. Right. Like they, they both present certain problems. There's both things that I feel like the Kings could have split for both of those teams. So, uh, I, they're, they're about the same for me. But if I had to choose, especially with Paul George not being there, uh, I would say, uh, the Clippers. I'll say this real quick though about the Warriors. There's a part of me that would want the Warriors now with Andrew Wiggins trying to find himself back, mm. back in. I like, get him. My whole thought is I like, get him early. Mm-hmm. I'd much rather face the Warriors now while Wiggins is trying to get acclimated and they're trying to figure some things out possibly as opposed to if we had to face them in the second round of the Western Conference Finals when they didn't figure out this stuff, won a series, and they might be clicking on all cylinders. So that's, that's part of the reason why I say the Warriors right now. I, w- I was going to get in there, Kenny. I, I was going to ask you some nuanced question about what's the thing that people overlook with the Kings or the biggest misnomer. Forget that. Who's the person <laughs> in media or in your family or in your friend circle who you are like, make a decision. Are you a Warrior fan or a King fan? Because believe me, I had friends. I did. <laughs> my buddy Sean Fahey switched sides and went from the Warriors to the Kings because of Jay Will and was riding high with the cowbells and then came back. I love you, Sean, but you know I'm going to call you out. Uh, and so I'm sure there are people in your life, whether it be media, friends, family, who are those people? I want to hear names. Are you going to tell them to pick a side? Oh, I'll tell you right now. And, and to be fair, I, she probably has already picked a side. You know what I mean? It is what it is. I, I, she already has. But I was there in 02, 03, 04 when she had to feel the roar shirt on and everything. And she was, you know, all turned up for the playoffs and all this other stuff. It's my mom. Okay, <laughs> my mom. My mom was in there in 0304. She was, you know, down with the Kings and everything. And all of a sudden, this little kid from Davis just comes around and he starts hitting jump shots and they start going to the playoffs and, and they go to the finals. And all of a sudden, she got all this Golden State Warriors gear. She loves Steph Curry. That's her boy. She got a yellow towel and all that. I said, Where all this come from? <laughs> so I told her, I said, Right now, I said, Mom, look, I'm, I love you. I love you, Mom. But I'm putting your picture at the Golden One Center. Don't let this woman in. I saw what was going on. I saw what she's been doing. I'm telling all my people at the tickets, don't let this woman in there. Don't let her, don't let her in the Golden One Center. So it's definitely my mom. She needs to friend her, friend her phone, 98. She needs to figure out what it is. Well, well, I know MJG one thing. MJG and Apol. Hey, hey, well, yeah. Did she go friend or They're, foe? Mac Mall, MJG and Apol. <laughs> hey, well, look. I know one pool thing. On the cover? I know one thing. Katie Caraway and Joe Shasky, the butcher, have a comment. They both do not. They're not a fan of Tim Donson's, I will say. Oh, no. 
Botsip says That's something him. earlier to see if he gets Sacramento. And I know Kenny Caraway went on Twitter, oh, ethered him. He? he ethered him in some Drake bars. He ethered him really? on the show. He ethered the coffee boy, Amir. Oh, What's yeah. our boy? Yeah, Amir. We know him. When Pete goes Amin in the sack, Amin El Hassan. Did not like Amin no, El Hassan. No, no, I'm, no, I'm, I'm calling him an Amir. I'm calling him Amir from now on. That's his name. I'm calling him Amir. Amir, the coffee boy. He caught some slugs in the Drake bars recently. Hey. I mean, if he shows up to Sacramento, we got a whole mixture. Kenny Caraway, they'll find him. Casey, Casey, <laughs> keep it, keep it real. Is is Guru the most hyped up for this Sacramento Warriors because he's going to have a front row seat every game? Guru turned up. I talked to Guru. I, Guru was like, "Yo, I'm here. I'm here. I don't. I, I ain't trying to put his business in the street. He might be. He might huh? be out there tonight. That's what the streets are saying. <laughs> yeah, he that's might be the, out there tonight. The streets are saying that." He is going to cut, and the streets are saying that. And you know what else the streets are saying? Cal Max is going to be in the building. Let me know what jersey he's wearing up there. Hey, that's a, that's another one, friend or foe. Uh, look, Cal Max is a Warriors fan since I know him, so it's acceptable. He shows love for Sacramento. Yeah, no doubt. Acceptable, but I'm gonna tell you right now, and, and Vontae, we told you before, and and, and and nothing has changed. We got Stacy. Okay, Stacy with us. She is with you guys. Stacy is with you guys. You know what? You can have Stacy. Because I see her walking into the Chase Center. I saw her in the Chase Center the day after I did the hit with you guys. She is there, Bonte, see, I'm still here at Chase Center. She had her daughter. She had care. And I said, yeah, but you don't got no Warriors gear on. And she hasn't even tried to stop by the gatehouse, Stacey Kaufman. She's all the way turned up with Sacramento. She's rocking D-Lo and KC gear. I ain't never seen her in no more than Rose hoodie, Shasky. So, Stacey, you know what? You can ask Stacey. When the Warriors advance Stacey to the does. second round, I don't want to hear Stacy. I don't want to see her at Jason. I got Stacy's back. I'm looking for a new contract. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Stacy, hey Stacy. You know it's all love, Stacy. I do want to tell you guys. I do want to tell you guys one thing that I think the people in the Bay Area are overlooking. And I, look, I know the Warriors travel. You know, I know what it is. Once again, because I got all the analogies. It's like Snoop Dogg at the '96 Source Awards. I know where we at. <laughs> I know we. I know what's going on here. I know what it is. But he was talking about. Gonna come up there. We gonna make it. Uh, we gonna make it. Chase Center West and, and, and Dub Nation about to take over. Look, they're going to be in there. But I don't know if you guys have peep what's going on with these tickets out here for this Kings playoffs on the resale market. I don't know what's going on or whatever on the resale market. Get in for Game One is like eight hundred dollars. <laughs> it's like eight hundred dollars to get in. And you know, when you talk about you want to be lower level or this other stuff, you're probably looking at like fifteen to two, oh, that, two, two thousand. That's chump change to Shasky. Shasky looking like, oh, that's nothing. Well, that's I'll game, drop that. Well, game I mean, thirty nine of the regular season for Warrior fans. <laughs> well, well, look, 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 I'm telling you, we, we didn't, we didn't, we didn't done the research. It's cheaper to go to Chase Center for for game one for, uh, for for game three than than what's going on at the Golden One Center this week. And and here's the thing that I say, it means so much more. To Sacramento and the Kings fans to be at that game, as opposed to a Warriors fan. That Warriors makes sense. Yeah, no, it does that make sense. sense. No, it does. They we sell out everything they got for round one. Yeah, that makes yeah, sense. Like, no doubt. Championships. You didn't. I'll, just, I'll see them at the Chase Center at this point, or I'll see them. You know, the, the whole allure to come to Sacramento for a long time was the fact that it was way cheaper than trying to go to Oracle or go to Chase. For this particular series, that's not really going to be the case. And it's around one. I know there's going to be Warrior fans in the building. I ain't saying that. I'm just saying. Coming down in droves to pay like fifteen hundred a seat, you know, to go to game two. Uh, I don't know. I'll yeah. catch them at Chase Center. So yeah, it's going to be a while. It, it, it might be a little different than people realize. Yeah, I'm a little disappointed because I know at NBC we're not going to be able to go up for the road games just because of the uh, the infrastructure up there. So I'm a little disappointed. I don't think I'm going to be able to go to one of those games in Sacramento. I was looking for that, but then again, I don't think Sacramento likes me like right now. So it's probably. Best if I stay in the Bay Area. Shasta, go ahead. You can light the torch up. You can light the beam up with your Warriors jersey. <laughs> Kenny Caraway, 1320 ESPN. Uh, ESPN 1320, 12-4 with D-Lo. We love Damian Barling as well. Uh, Kenny, man, going to be a lot of fun tonight. It'll be a lot of fun. It, it is, it is going to be fun tonight. I'm going to be in the building. You know, I'm going to survey the scene. You know, I'm checking to see, you know, what jerseys is going on so I can, you know, have that photographic memory and be like, all right, hey, Lee, because that's my guy at the front, Lee, 
No, nah, don't let this one in, man. I saw him last Friday, man. He had that he had that curry jersey on. Don't let him in here trying to light the thing. Now I'm taking inventory right now. This is this is a no fly zone. I'm like trick trick in Detroit, man. Oh People gotta check in before they come through Sacramento. Oh, trick trick, come on, man. Get out of here, Casey. You are not Jay Dilla. Get out of here, Jake. You're done. We're done. We'll talk to you next week, man. You're done. <laughs> y'all be good, man. You know I love y'all, man. The morning roast. I'm a roaster. I'll be texting y'all all the time. You here, do. So. You know I'm a roaster, man. I love y'all, man, and I love what y'all do. Say that drop. Say that drop. <laughs> Kitty Caraway's a roaster, and we rock with D-Lo in case you no doubt he about it. I love him. Kitty, Kitty, have fun up there, man. We'll be texting. Y'all take care, baby. Anytime. <gasps>